Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And a long time ago, you might remember that I looked at a device very similar to this. And this, of course, is the X1 tablet. I just love the neat idea that they had uh, with this design. Um, definitely a unique piece of kit. Although it, it, you know, it had its growing pains and there were a couple things that were a little bit problematic with it but it was a great place to start and these devices have had a great legacy and they continue today to the X12, which is very, very similar. Now, if you wanna see more information about this, then you can go ahead and click right there and it will take you to a video, not on this one, but one that's essentially the same. But today we are not here to talk about this one. We are here to talk about the third generation X1 tablet. And this thing, from a distance, and if you squint really hard, might actually look very similar to a Surface. And they definitely took some cues from that device line. But ultimately, I think what they've actually built here is essentially better than a Surface. But we are seeing this logo here, and that means I'm going to play the intro. All right, with the intro out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about what this thing is all about. So this, of course, is a super crazy flexible X1 tablet third generation. And these are actually currently still being sold by Lenovo. You can buy them right now, and I'll be leaving links uh, where you can find them on eBay, Amazon, and of course, the Lenovo store as well, if you want to pick up one that is new that still has warranty and all of that good stuff. Just to give you an idea, other than being hugely influenced by the Surface design language, it's got a 3x2, 3000 by 2400 nit panel, and it is Gorilla Glass, so this thing is pretty darn durable. It is also worth pointing out that this also supports the Lenovo Pen and uh, 4096 levels of touch. Inside we have full U-series CPUs, 8th gen, so that does mean that we are going to be Windows 11 capable. So we have the i5-8250U, the i5-8350U, the i7-8550U, and the i7-8650U. RAM is low power DDR3, 2133 MHz, and it's maxed out at 8 gigs soldered on, of course. And we are running the Intel UHD 620, as well for Wi-Fi, the Intel 8265 with Bluetooth 4.2. Your SSD is an M.2 2280 SSD, which is NVMe, and that will depend on which model, what drives actually came inside of these machines. Some of them were M.2 and some were NVMe. So just keep in mind, depending on how yours is configured from the factory, you will have different drive speeds and performances. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about some of the physical features. Obviously we have the Lenovo keyboard, which is being set up with pogo style pins on the bottom. The tablet itself has this amazingly flexible kickstand, which you saw me demonstrate at the very beginning of the video. As you can see, this thing can essentially lie uh, pretty darn near flat. Like that is quite a bit of flexibility that I must say puts a lot of the service machines to shame. In terms of other features we have, of course, a power button on this side, a volume rocker over here, and then on the other side, we have a pin eject, and the pin eject, of course, reveals the uh, SIM card and then the micro SD card. But the star of the show is easily the two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 3 ports. A lot of power uh, by the... This essentially has more ports than an X1 Nano, so take that as you will. We do have the headphone microphone combo jack as well at the bottom. 
with two front firing speakers built into the display, very similar to what they did on many of the Surface line. Up at the top bezel, of course, we have a 2 megapixel front facing camera, and they would have an optional infrared array for Windows Hello. And if you had that, then you also had NFC communication. And then you have a rear facing 8 megapixel camera, which unfortunately did drop the flash. Uh, so unlike the Gen 1, there is no flash accompanying the camera, um, but I suppose that's a feature that you're not necessarily going to miss. The battery inside is 42 watt hours, and if you stretch it to its max, you're probably looking at around 9.5 hours of runtime, but do keep in mind that that will be very conservative. The last thing I'll point out is that we do have a pen storage slot as well, featured right there. And while this tablet can be opened and serviced, because this is going pretty much immediately uh, to its forever home, and it's in such gorgeous condition, I dare not actually open it. If you are looking at how to service the machine, I will leave the link to the hardware maintenance manual in the description down below. Realistically though, the only thing that you're gonna be going in there and servicing is the SSD. Um, I can't think of any other reason why you might want to go in there other than maybe refresh the thermal paste. With all that being said though, let's go ahead and, you know, turn it on and see what it's like to use uh, such a display. And as you can tell, the panel is crazy glossy because you can see my studio lights in there um, pretty much perfectly. So let's tilt it down just a little bit and get it in the shot and we'll press the power button. And as you can see, a 400 nit panel really doesn't disappoint. It's absolutely beautiful, even at a, you know, pretty much any angle that you can imagine. This thing is going to look really, really good. The keyboard has lots of travel, even for it being a folio case. They put the thickness where it matters there. And of course, you can either lie it flat, like you would on many tablet devices, or you can use the internal magnet to put it at an angle up off the desk so it's a bit more ergonomic. Touch, of course, is beautifully responsive. The camera system on this is really, really nice. Two megapixels front facing is uh, quite good. And unlike some of the other cameras, it just looks a little cleaner. Um, that could also be the amount of light that's being thrown around, but it looks really good. The refresh rate's great. And then, of course, you have a main camera, which is going to be awesome for all sorts of things from corporate espionage to just taking boring pictures of whiteboards and things. You know, people in meeting stuff. So with light use on battery saver mode, we can pretty safely get at least five to six hours. But do keep in mind that depending on the battery health and how hard you're pushing it and if you're using Wi-Fi, screen brightness, all of that's going to play pretty significant role on a 42 watt hour battery. It's driving a very bright, very high resolution display. They are U-series processors, but they are full processors. These aren't uh, necessarily being handicapped uh, in any measurable way other than, of course, heat dissipation. In terms of what these tablets could cost, they will vary in price depending on whether you get them used or not. On eBay and on some sales, you can get them as low as around 900 Canadian dollars currently. But then, of course, they can go up to 11 or 1500 depending on what they're spec'd out as. And, of course, those prices can keep climbing depending on the seller, the condition, and all of that other good stuff. You can also still get them from Lenovo, as I mentioned earlier. And, of course, if you do that, you can still get them under warranty. But if you're looking at getting a pretty high-end Surface-style device and you want something that could even outwit a Surface of similar make and quality, then this is certainly it. Some might be discouraged by no full USB 3.0 Type-A port. However, I think if you're getting this kind of portable device, then you might be willing to forgive yourself that, pick up a dongle, and just enjoy the slim profile of this machine that, as I mentioned earlier, 
does have more ports than an X1 Nano, but not by much in the sense that it has a micro SD card reader, and that's about it. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoyed this look at the X1 Tablet Gen 3. It is a really beautiful piece of kit. I think the person that's going to be getting this is going to enjoy it very, very much because there is an awful lot to like. And it's just a premium feeling, fun, durable little device. I think they really came a long way from the Gen 1 with this thing in making it something that can truly go toe to toe with other Windows tablets of its class and still do everything that you would expect a computer to do. I hope you enjoyed this and I would encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So the next time I get the chance to feature a really cool tablet like this, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much and I will see you next time.